Preeti. Namaskar. I have a question to your teaching. On the one hand, uh, you have already described the soul as a recording atom. That means the soul records everything, uh, what is perceived in the course of a life by the sense organs like the eyes, the nose, the ears, etc. On the other hand, you say that the soul is independent of identity. You are not the soul, as you say. Now, it's not clear uh, to me what is the reason for this uh, recording since uh, the, the sense organs are bound to the body and the soul continues to exist even after the death of the body. And what happens to this information that is recorded? To try to put sense into any of these things, to try to put conceptual order into any of these things is a very, very difficult venture because what is happening with this existence and with the soul and with source, with the cosmic experience, with the internal experience of the connect with the truth of one's being are all actually experiences that go beyond the conceptual. They don't happen in the conceptual realm. So, in the attempt to explain what's going on, that explanation is only there to sort of calm the thinking down. Okay, okay, your mind is hungry to know something, okay, I'll tell you something. Something that is not a lie or it's not false, but it's very limited. It's almost laughable how limited the conceptual is. What happens is that when you expand beyond that conceptual, when you start to, to step into the transformative state, a lot of artists live a lot of the time in that transformative state, they're not really thinking so much, but they're more transformative. They're more creating associations and, and making associations and so on. The conceptual already in those states is much weaker. The questions have already begun to fall away a bit. Then if you move from the transformative into a uniform state, then those questions fall away even more. Then you're just one, you know, we are one with everything. You're you're one with the soul, you're one with the soul of the other, you're one with the other, you're one with the tree, you're one with the with the plant, you're one with the stone, you're one with everything. And what place does the conceptual querying have, what answers does it bring in a uniform state? Nothing, because there are no questions there. Also in that pluriform state where you feel so sort of godly, you know, where there is looking on all of creation and seeing the pluriformity of everything, you know that in that state that contradictory concepts exist together. So, if you pull back down into the conceptual, the conceptual is very, very limited. It doesn't have the ability to actually describe what is happening in the pluriform state. For example, in the pluriform state, in a given moment, you can know what happened in the past tense in this particular spot, what happens in the future and what is going on now. You can know it. So, in a conceptual state, you would not be able to explain that because it would be, well, it's now or it's now or it's now. 
But no, it's now and in this now there's before and after as well. What I want to say with this is that the conceptual is limited. Yes, the soul can be described as a recording atom which records through the senses everything that this body experiences. It records it, it leaves, it drops the body and it's gone. Why does it record it? No reason. Just like that. Why does it have to have a reason? It can just do it. Does it really record it? That's what the experience is, but maybe it's different with someone else. The conceptual attempt to grasp everything can be fed with amazing logical discourses. I can give you 10 explanations that would satisfy you about how the whole thing works. I could say, for example, that the soul takes up a body time and again as a leela of existence, as a dance, a joyous dance of existence. It takes up a body and through that body it receives informations and it enjoys existence that way and then it moves on, drops the body and then it takes on another existence. When I say that you are not the soul, what I'm trying to say is that this idea that I am the soul, which is a very common fad in today's day and age, you have lots of new age gurus, neo Advaita gurus, in fact, a lot of the spiritual food around at the moment is telling people that they are the soul. They are saying, you are not the body, you are the soul. And one thing we know, if at all, is that this is here, I can feel it. I'm definitely the body. And then, of course, someone will come along and say, that's just a, an illusion, that's an identification with something which is not actually there. So then how can you say, I am the soul? That's even more of an illusion. I can feel my heart, I can feel it beating. It's not as much of an illusion as the soul, as a possibility. So that is why I say, you are not the soul. Even the very idea of I is something created. It is part of, the, of that big body of ego that is created. The moment you get a name, you already have created a bit of ego in that little child. You didn't come born with a name. So how can you say, I am the soul? When you don't even know what the soul is. In order to know what the soul is, you have to experience the soul. And in order to experience the soul, you have to accept that there is this I that is experiencing that. This is experiencing that. So, for a seeker, what is important is to go into a state of tuning in to that, to that center of the whole being and to let the thoughts fall away, let the questions fall away. There will not be an answer that will ever satisfy anyone. It is the questions that will fall away. The answers cannot satisfy and they can be very brilliant. I can tell you that the soul has multicolored wings and that each color flaps when a thought of one kind enters and that when the body drops away, the colors of that soul fade into white. And there are people to whose mind that would be okay to accept. I hope not to yours. The conceptual is limited, it can't 
even begin to grasp anything. It is useful for planning what you're going to do tomorrow. And the experience of the soul is something which which is about just an impulse, it's just a flow and an impulse. And it still can make logical sense to say that the soul is here, because that is its raison d'etre, its reason for existence, is to experience through a body what it has to experience, and then it moves on and experiences it again. And first it takes in all that experience, it moves on, it fulfills itself into a state of Truth again, and then it moves on and takes up another body, and then starts giving on that Truth into that body. I think <laughs> good timing. I like the timing at which that came in. So do continue. The time has come to drop the questions. Whatever question arises, move beyond it. Move beyond it. A logical answer to the mysteries of existence will never satisfy. It can't satisfy, because the concepts available to humankind do not and cannot embrace what the Truth of Existence is. One has to go beyond the concepts and into the experience. So I can reiterate that, yes, the Soul does have a function, which is to receive through the body the informations of a life, and that that's its Leela, that's why it's here. And then it moves on, and then it repeats that, and it repeats that, and maybe it doesn't. What is crucial is how to live this life with as little suffering as possible and with as much joy as possible. That is the crucial thing for everyone. Whether it's material suffering, material physical suffering, whether it's emotional suffering, whether it's conceptual suffering, whether it's transformative suffering, creative suffering. That's why this artist called, because there's creative suffering there which needs resolution. Whether it's the suffering because the uniform experience, the unity consciousness experience is not happening, or whether it's suffering because in the pluriform state there are challenges. All of that reduces when there is the tuning in to that center and source of the being, and gradually joy starts to happen in life. It actually happens. <laughs> I think that's also quite powerful, you know, when when the when the existential questions fall away. <laughs>